so uh, this is Trevor and uh, this is my thoughts on the last two chapters of Ender's Game. Uh, I feel like Card ended his novel fairly well. Uh, he really showed what happens after Ender defeats the buggers, which isn't seen in a lot of stories, um, but he did it and I think it helped it. Uh, Peter was really interesting, I thought. Uh, he come, he becomes Hegemon, which is kind of amazing to me, because he turns out to be half-decent. Uh, he doesn't start a mass genocide or anything, which is what I would have expected him to do. Really showed uh, that his character had changed throughout the story, and kind of reinforced Valentine's statements that she made at the lake about Peter. Um, I feel like Ender helping found a new colony helped him become more mentally stable. Uh, after he destroys the buggers, I don't know what kind of a mindset he'd be in, and obviously he wasn't in a good one, but I really think that helped mellow him out for a while. Although, to me it seemed like Ender just kind of saw it as a meaningless task to occupy his time because he really couldn't go anywhere else. Uh, I'm not really sure why they didn't let him go back to Earth after the first few years because obviously everybody you knew was dead but I mean were they afraid he'd become the next Hitler? I never really answered that one uh, after the initial thoughts on why he couldn't go back. Uh, also the timeline up until that point doesn't really make sense to me because Ender was on the command station for like two years and then Valentine shows up, and uh, in that time he had spent another couple years with Valentine building the colony. So, if five years passed and uh, Peter aged like seventy years, Valentine was on Earth for like two of those years, so she'd be middle aged, like in her fifties. And the story just kind of left that unanswered too. It never really mentioned if she had aged or things like that. It kind of bothered me. Um, I also found Valentine's choices at the end of the story kind of odd. Um, I understand her leaving Earth to be with Ender and helping found the colony, but I'm not really sure why she chose to go with Ender at the very end when he travels into space. Um, up until that point, she had had a fairly normal life. I mean, she went to school, she lived with people as she knew, and like, it didn't explicitly state it, but I'm pretty sure that she probably had some friends on Earth, or like, wanted to have a boyfriend at some point, something like that. Uh, and I just, I don't really know what kind of a person gives up their whole life to, um, to just, uh, live with their brother. It's kind of weird to me. Um, Ender's choice to travel alone, I understand. Uh, no matter what he did throughout the rest of his life, he wouldn't fit in. I mean, he's kind of like the only celebrity on that planet, and everybody living around him was kind of like the paparazzi. They just kind of surrounded him, and they always knew who he was. They were always staring at him. I mean, that'd get on your nerves after a while. Uh, another reason he left, I think, is because, I mean, he feels like it's his duty to save the bugger race after he encounters the queen. Um, which brings me to that part. Out of, if they could communicate with Ender, why couldn't they communicate with anyone else? Were they just, like, afraid that nobody else would understand, or... I wasn't sure about that part either. Uh, I still have a lot of questions about what's actually occurring throughout the entirety of the story, but I guess uh, those answers never really, or those questions never really get answered, so um, yeah, those are my thoughts on the final portion of Ender's Game. I enjoyed it, but the reading level was a little bit low, so kind of made it monotonous. But other than that, uh, Card did a good job ending it. He answered most of the questions, but there's still some plot holes.